All right, I'm sitting just outside of Toll Booth, and that's the bridge. <laughs> Check this out. So there's two bridges here, right? So first, this is US, and then I cross into this Wellesley Island, and then Hill Island, and that black line, that's the can Canadian side. But So first I cross one bridge, and then I cross the second bridge, and the customs is on the island and so so now basically my job is to sit tight here and look at my mirror where the girl will jump out and start waving hands meaning that the bridge is closed because her boss just passed in a nice looking black uh, Ford Explorer kind of like black you know like a cop's drive and he went to the other side of the bridge to close the bridge I'm I'm 11 too wide there's no shoulders here and that's why they charge me $170 Canadian and hopefully I'm gonna get that back and so once she starts waving at me meaning that the, the the bridge is closed we'll just go over this one and then I'll deal with customs and then she gave me a piece of paper for the other bridge because that bridge is Canadian so she gave me a piece of paper with a phone number. So once I clear customs, I have to park there and call that number and wait for them to tell me when it's okay, when it's okay to uh, cross. And yeah, I was sitting in um, Gibson gibson pa almost until noon today because i came there last night you know i was pretty tired didn't even practice my accordion just did the movie for youtube and went to bed but then actually this morning i did some practicing on my green uh, garmoshka i feel pretty good i'm gonna practice again at uh, at night and this thing is tricky yeah i applied for this one when yesterday no the day before because if you don't have this approval you cannot cross this bridge and so i parked like a uh, hundred meters away from the toll booth and i walked and i showed her my approval number so this is my permit number that i was approved and she has my paperwork in her hand i guess they don't have that many oversized loads here and um, so she had my my printed application where I, I put in all the numbers. Yeah, you already see that there's no vehicles from the other side. You see that? Yeah, it's been a while since. And you see now they're stopping that red truck, I think. So we'll see if they're letting. I think after that guy, it'll be my turn. But basically, yeah, so I see a big change. No vehicles coming from Canada or other uh, Hill Island because that's still US. Now I think this lady over there. Okay, good. Yeah, I see she's waving. So that's it. The bridge is mine. <laughs> I see she stopped all. She stopped all those guys over there. She asked me, she says, you ever did this before? I said, 
Yeah, I did this once, but from the Canada side. I don't remember, but look at that bridge. It's always... I'm always in awe. Like, look at the... <laughs> at the angle. <laughs> I don't know how my truck can drive like this. Like, it seems like a freaking 60 degree angle. But I wanted to show you guys because this is such a treat. You know, um... Like it's so beautiful over here. Actually, I was all, I always want to go here on a on a uh, cruise. You know, in the summer they have ships, like a boat for tourists. Because this is it's so nice here, and they have a bunch of houses. People live on the that's the island. Yeah. So now I'm crossing on the first island, so to speak, right? Sergey, oh, I think we're gonna call this video Alone on the Bridge. And now they're gonna close the, uh, there's a sign there in front of the bridge. And there's a sign there. And so that guy in the black car uh, will be sitting there. They're probably like a red light or something there. So people, yeah, I see. You see there? There's a guy with flashing lights. Oh, they're probably like a, like a barrier. So they close. You see, that's why they charge 170 bucks. I think that's even decent because they closed the entire freaking bridge because of me. The guy is there and he's uh, turning off the lights. And there's a light there. Oh, it's a girl actually. Huh. And the tall lady says, my boss. She said, my boss will go across the bridge. So that's what it is. Yeah, it's a set of lights. So she goes there and she manually turns them to red. And then she parks her car like this. And... Uh, so yeah, now this is the island. This is the familiar sign, 401, yes. Which means that I'm nearing, I'm nearing Canada. But this is still 81, right? I-81 North, we're still in New York. And by the way, you see I have my flashing light on, on the roof, but as soon as I enter Canada, I don't need that light anymore. Because New York, New York requires requires uh, overhead amber flashing light or rotating light, but in Ontario you only need that light if you expect to be I forgot I think it's like 20 or 30 kilometers less, you know slower than speed limit, like basically 15 20 miles. Which, of course, can happen if you're somewhere in the mountains. If you're somewhere like in the northern Ontario and you're climbing hills, that's when you need that light. But if you're on like a 401, you know, on the freeway, and uh, you're, you're keeping up with the traffic, you don't need that light. And so I usually just turn it off as soon as I enter Canada because that's just a magnet for cops, you know. Oh wow, we're still pretty far. I can see my truck moving on the, the picture, moving on the on the tablet. So now we're going kind of like northeast. And then yeah, the border is right here on the on the island. So the second part of the island is already Canada. But yeah, I remember this. This is uh I just go through the customs, I have all my paperwork printed out, my ACI, my ACI manifest, I have my passport, 
Okay, they're gonna ask me how many days in the States, uh, when did I... Okay, she says, last US exit, the Wolf Point, exit 52. That's it, after this you're going to Canada. So when did I cross? So today is Tuesday, right? I loaded... I loaded Monday, but before that I loaded Friday in, in Woodstock when I was picking moving that drainage plow and I crossed Monday I think yeah because I was sitting uh, all weekend in Sarnia so I, I crossed Monday and then Monday I delivered Wednesday then I got back uh, so yeah if they ask me now how many how long in the States I'll say today's Tuesday so eight eight days eight days Alright, so I'm gonna shut the camera down because I'm gonna deal with uh, customs now. So, eight days, no cigarettes, no weapons. And then I'll start the camera again when I'm crossing the other bridge because that one, it's even more interesting than this one because that one has a very sharp turn at the end and there's a sign there that says trucks reduce speed roll over danger so it's really exciting all right so customs is done i'm sitting in the parking lot i asked the, and actually it's so much nicer here whereas at the first uh, toll booth there's only one spot where you can park and you know after the, that's where i was waiting right right next to the uh, shoulder to the green grass they have a long spot there but that's not actually a parking spot whereas here uh, there's uh, maybe 20 parking spots you know for trucks that have some kind of issue with the customs paperwork right so they let's say they let you through and then they say park your truck go and see go and see the office and to my left is the building where all the uh, offices are and also they have docks here so they have docks so sometimes you know if they have uh questions about your cargo they will tell you you know go back to dock you know number three or whatever and then they go they can unload you even and then of course you pay for unloading <laughs> that's that's actually an interesting idea right so let's say a cop stops you and he says okay you go find a guy with a forklift pay him to unload you because I want to look at skid number one near the wall at the very end and then of course you have to pay him again to put everything back it doesn't make much sense but that's how it is you know like at uh, uh, I remember at the at the peace bridge there they have a sign on the door that says okay you can call these guys to help you load or unload like you know you're lucky if you just have two boxes right and you're empty right but if you have a full fura or van with skids you know that's a lot of money to uh well i don't know maybe not that much i don't know maybe like 300 bucks 500 bucks to unload and then 500 bucks to load again so which is cool that i don't have that right i just have one piece it's clearly visible it's machinery you want to see it here actually a couple of times they asked me it's a park for inspection and I said you guys realize that my trailer is an RGN trailer and they're like uh, what's an RGN I said RGN removable gooseneck trailer I said like a double drop a low boy said, it's very low if I back to a dock you won't be able to jump on the trailer okay park next to the building and so I parked next to the building and some girls in a nice shiny uniform came out and they just looked at my machine and sent me back to US back then because I had uh, dirty tracks on the excavator so anyway so basically yeah what we're doing now so I call them they said sit tight in the parking lot one of our guys will come over and get you and that's the um, 
the Canadian customs guy also reminded me, he says, did you make arrangements with the bridge authority? I said, they give me a, a piece of paper with a phone number. And he says, yeah, make sure you don't go across the bridge without their permission. And that's when he said, I said, where can I park? And he said, okay, park here or park on the right. I said, okay, I'll park here. Okay, the guy showed up. This time it's a, it's a blue Chevy, but it's still a Chevy. Impala. See over here it's a bit different, right? Over there they just they close the bridge and they let me go. But here the guy showed up and he says, yeah, we're good to go. He says, just follow me. Okay. And I think also he, what, what he'll be doing, I see already says, welcome to Ontario. So this is already Canada. And they have this sky deck. I never, I never see it work, you know? I don't know if there's an elevator there, but it's supposed to give you uh, oh, tower elevator. Tower, but it's always closed. All right, so I'm guessing here the guy is communicating via radio with the other side, so they're gonna do the same thing. They're gonna close. They're gonna close the bridge. Now oh, this is I don't remember this one. Actually, I've been here a while. Border Mall, Border Gifts, Fishing Licenses. Alright, so he shows me. Go, go, alright. I don't remember, is this one smaller? No, it's the same. But this is, the views here are nicer. And you're closer to the water, right? Whereas that one just starts like this, crazy up, you know? But yeah, it's very steep, very steep. But I feel like a kid at Christmas, you know, like it's kind of like somebody showing me pretty postcards. Oh yeah, you see the boat in there. I want to do that. I want to come here and go on a boat and just go on a tour. Yeah, that's the turn I was talking about. You see, 15 miles per hour, 25 kilometers per hour. And there's so many islands in here. There's like tiny baby islands and uh, often they would have like a house on them. Oh, well, I can go wide here, right? Because the bridge is supposed to be closed. see and that's it so they also stop this traffic over here and so yeah they open that one and that's it that was quick so now we have to look for 401 East towards Ottawa. 
Oh, and I can turn off my flashing light. And there'll be a turn, or rather a, uh, a ramp. Yeah, that's 401 over there in the... Today I'm just gonna go to the next truck stop which is 56 clicks away so 30 miles because there's no truck stops after that on 416 because I have to take 401 and then in 30 miles I'm turning north on uh, freeway 416 and there's no truck stops there and then there's a Quebec border and oh and by the way my uh, my Quebec permit just finally got issued and so I'm gonna stop at this it's pretty big truck stop over there and then I'm gonna get up at probably five o'clock in the morning again and as soon as it's daylight, I'm gonna start trucking. Yeah, 50, 54 kilometers. Which is just over 30 miles. So we are 147 clicks from Ottawa. Even though I'm going to Quebec and that's east but Quebec is actually a pretty big uh, province and a lot of it is in the north and that's where my uh, my delivery is it's in a town called uh, Val d'Or Val V-A-L and then d'Or D apostrophe O-R Val d'Or Valdor, Quebec, and that's just north of Ottawa. And so tomorrow I'm gonna go towards Ottawa, which is the capital of Canada, right? And then there's a river there, and as soon as I cro cross that river, that's already Quebec or Quebec in French, right? And I'm gonna double check my permit tonight, make sure that's how they sent me. check out where all the uh, inspection stations are just to be off and I have to remember to change my sign almost forgot because uh, if you've been watching my channel you know that in Quebec they don't understand they get very confused when they see a sign that says oversize load that's a lot of letters they have no idea what that is you know they see a flashing light on the roof what the heck is this so they need one letter one letter D that they understand and so, so I'll probably do it in the morning in the morning I'll just switch all my signs to D letter single letter Uh, interesting thing happened uh, I stopped at you know I like that little truck stop at exit 48 in uh, Watertown Watertown New York it's right just north of Watertown it used to be like a third party independent truck stop then it got taken over by uh, I forgot what it is now but it's uh, it's one of those chains and diesel, I could not believe this, right? Like this morning, no, yesterday, yesterday night, I filled up across the street from the Flying J in Gibson, it was 349. At the Flying J, it was 392 or something, or 386. And so I didn't even went to Flying J, I stopped on this side on the, uh, 
which side was that? On the east side. Yeah, I stopped on the east side of uh, I-81. There's nice little truck stop there, lots of parking, even for oversized load. Uh, fuel is, you know, 40 cents cheaper. Nice coffee. I don't know. And they have Wendy's in there. So today as I was waiting for my uh, New York permit, I went in there, I said, I want four patties. Give me four beef patties. The guy looks at me and starts shouting, Angie, come here. This guy wants patties. I don't know how to punch them in. Some cute little girl comes out. It's kind of like that situation, you know, like a grandpa with a kid where the grandpa is asking the five-year-old kid, how do you stop this tablet? You know, or how do you send a text message on the phone? And the tablet, and the, and the, and the kid says, hey, it's easy, grandpa, just watch here. And so that 15-year-old girl comes out, double checks with me, so that I said, yeah, I only want meat. Just give me four patties. And she says, you want big, big ones, like on our big burgers? I said, yeah. Okay, brother, 514, $5.14. Four patties like this thick. I barely finished them. And so that was a super nice stop. So I got cheap fuel, well, relative for Pennsylvania. I got uh, nice food, um, lots of parking, it was good to sleep there, it was pretty quiet except the guy two spots next to me was idling all night, I don't know what's the problem is with some people, it's like raining, it's really nice temperature outside, like maybe 70F, you know, 20, 21C, he's idling all night, I just opened the window and I slept, I slept like a baby and then uh, yeah, in the morning I did a movie for my uh, Russian uh, Garmoshka channel. I was just talking about the Italian, Italian accordions versus Russian accordions. Super exciting topic for me right now. And then I got my uh, New York permit around 10 o'clock, no 11 o'clock, I printed it out. And from there, it was about three hours. It took me three hours to get from Gibson, Pennsylvania to uh, Watertown, New York. And I always stop there because it's just like, I don't know, 10 miles away from the border. And so I stopped there and I printed out my uh, ACI manifest, which was already approved. Right, so that's it, and then I got, oh, and I got fuel. I got both tanks of fuel because over there, it was 319, 3.19 US dollars per gallon. Yeah, I know, guys from England, please stop crying. Just move to Canada or move to US, but that's what it is. 319 a gallon, and US gallon has 3.78 liters. I know, it's painful, but you probably charge much more per mile, right? If you pay eight, nine dollars a gallon, I can only guess what people pay for shipping over there. So there should be some kind of balance, right? Like people still make, need to make money. So, so here, when we charge them three dollars a mile, over there, they probably charge them ten dollars a mile for a regular load, I don't know. Somebody leave a comment because I want to know, like, how do you survive when fuel, if you're running a trucking company, how do you survive if fuel costs you $8 US a gallon? They're just nuts, right? Anyway, thank you for watching. And so, yeah, after this, so I'm going to deliver tomorrow and then I'm going to jump, uh, as one guy used to say, bounce. Then I'm gonna bounce 500 clicks back to Toronto area. And then I'm gonna load uh, a dozer, 50,000 uh, pounds, take it to Michigan, drop it, bounce three hours east back into Canada, and 
and uh, load uh, a drainage plow and go back to Minnesota. So that's my plan uh, for this week. Probably I'll be back from Michigan. By the time I'm back, I'm done with that dozer. It's probably gonna be Friday or Saturday. And that plow, the guy says, will be ready Monday, next Monday. So that should work nice. And then I, st I have to start thinking about the, uh, the, um, my trip to the Ethan uh, Proving Grounds because they want me there on the last day of August. So I have to spend a couple of days, you know, filming and doing videos uh, about their new transmission. So I would love to go in my car, but probably the chances are I'll just, when I, when I deliver the drainage plow, I'll just drive back empty because there's no loads there anyway. I'll just drive empty and they told me, Ethan told me that's okay, they have lots of parking there because it's a, it's a testing grounds for trucks. So they said there's 24-7 security, you can park your truck with the trailer you know no problemo so so that's what's happening so stay tuned uh, more videos to come please like subscribe ciao